Hey everyone, my name is Jordan Powers and today I'm going to talk a little bit about sky replacements. Now there's a million tutorials out there about how to do sky replacements. This is not a video about how to do sky replacements, although I will show you how I do them. The reason I wanted to make a separate video on this particular subject is because I've been doing them a different way than most people have been doing them for the last three years. And it's not so much in the technique, it's more in the skies that I actually use. And I want to show you something that I haven't seen anybody else using. I'm not claiming to be the only person out there that's doing this, but I feel like this is a unique approach that you guys might want to consider doing. Chances are, if you're watching this channel, uh, if you follow me, you are in the architecture or real estate photography space. Uh, so I'm going to actually start off with the landscape photo for those of you who are landscape photographers and you're just stumbling across the sky replacement thing for the first time or you wanted to learn a new technique. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start off with a landscape photo. This is taken in the Badlands. I took this a few years back. Photoshop came out with this brand new sky replacement feature. You can go in here and you can select from one of their pre, uh, pre-made skies that they have in here. You can do like a blue sky and they all look really nice. I mean, this is, this is great. Uh, and if we go through these options that they have available, it, you can see Photoshop does a really good job. It even adjusts the foreground light. Uh, to an extent to uh, match match up with the sky a little bit. However, the problem with this library and most libraries that we collect is that if you'll notice, you know, these are all really cool clouds, but none of them actually match with the scene. None of them actually, they just don't match. The sky might look good, but in terms of like physics and, and, and science, it doesn't match up. Like the sun isn't in the right location. Um, it's not necessarily the right type of light for this time of day that it was taken. There's a lot of factors in here that just make the sky incorrect. So as an experienced photographer, as you're going through and looking at photos, you can notice when you see uh, an amateur sky replacement, one that's done improperly. The best way to make a sky replacement is to have a sky that matches the scene of what was actually happening. Uh, to an extent, obviously you're only doing a sky replacement because the sky was either boring or overcast. But if you're going to replace the sky, you at least want to match it as close as possible with, with what was happening in the actual scene. The problem with that is that most of the photos that we have are just like this. They're just these individual photos that, um, I'll zoom in on these a little bit so you can kind of see them a little bit better. They're just these individual photos that don't really have, um, you know, they're just like, showing cool clouds, but that's all you have is just a library full of cool, cool photos. So what I've been doing different that I was hinting to earlier is I've actually been collecting full 360 degree panoramic skies since 2018. And I have a library of over 200 of these things. So I'm just going to show you a few and show you how they work. So if you click on this little plot, well, first of all, what I would suggest doing if you're creating a whole new library is I would create a folder first. And you can call this uh, panos if you want. And then I would, you can click the plus sign. And what you do is you find the sky that you want to use. You can go ahead and add in here. I'm using spring evening 001 and I'll talk about that in a minute. And as you can see, we have a sky replacement using this pano. The thing about Photoshop that makes it really nice is that I can move this sky around and match it up perfectly with where the sun is located. So if we study the photo, we can see the sun's obviously coming from up over here uh, to the right. It's kind of low to the horizon. It's not, it's not super high. Uh, and this, this photo kind of matches uh, where the sun is going to be located. Obviously the, the sun isn't in this particular photo, but we know it's going to be over here. So we can kind of move the sky over here to the right and get it to a place where it feels like it matches up a little better. And obviously this is a quick job. You know, there's a lot of, lot of other factors that, you, that you're gonna wanna consider when doing sky replacements. But for the most part, this sky matches what's happening in the actual scene. So we can go ahead and hit okay, and we've got a sky replacement. If you wanna look at the before and after. And I think it looks pretty good. Okay, and now if you're an architect, or I'm sorry, an architecture photographer or real estate photographer, I only have one sky right here available because I forgot to preload some sky, so I just downloaded a few photos that I had stored on my uh, Dropbox. Uh, but same, same exact principles here. We can go ahead and do a, uh, go into our sky replacement feature. 
We'll go ahead and add another sky. And I'm going to choose Summer Evening 001. Uh, but first, again, we want to find where our sun is. And we, what we can do is we can scale out if we want to just to like get a better view of wh what's going on in the sky here. We know our sun is kind of to the edge here. And this would probably be a decent location, so we can go ahead and scale this back up. And just make sure the horizon is down here where it should be. And I think this is a pretty decent spot. Again, I'm just doing a quick job just to kind of show you my point. Uh, the fact that you can move these around. Now there are a ton of free sky libraries out there. You can go on any of the Facebook groups and uh, there's, there's sky libraries available. 90% uh, of them or more are all going to be these individual portions of skies. And there's nothing wrong with those. The problem is you collect a massive library of skies and you got to sift through them all the time. So I created a resource called the Sky Library. Sky Library is a website that's designed for photographers, uh, graphic designers, and I have over 200 of these full panoramic skies. You can search by category, you can search by you know sunsets, blue skies, 360 degree skies, or the types of clouds even. Uh, so far I have a certain amount of categories listed here for the different types of clouds I collected. Let's just say you want to find some cirrus clouds. You can come in here and it's going to show you every image that I have available containing cirrus clouds. Not only that, but when you go into one of these images, it's going to have a meteorologist drafted description of what's happening in the, in the sky so that you can better educate yourself on what's happening, you can make better predictions, and just better informed decisions when doing sky replacements. So if you're not even interested in purchasing, you can come to this website and learn a little bit about skies just to get a, a little bit of an education on what's happening. This was important to me because as I mentioned, I was just collecting skies that I thought were cool and I would just try to find the coolest looking sky for any image. So I wanted to better understand not just what was happening in the sky, but how to predict what was going to be happening in the sky based on cloud formations, based on the temperature. So these descriptions have really helped me over the last three years better understand what's happening in the sky and make predictions. Not just for my photography, but just for fun. Now, not only can you, off, can you uh, go into the categories, you can also search the different uh, types of skies we have in here based on time of day. So you can do uh, spring if you want for the season. It'll show you every image taken in the spring. You can do uh, morning. It's gonna show you every image that was taken in the morning. Now, even though each sky is individually priced uh, reasonably, you can also download a whole bundle of skies. So we have a 360 bundle, a, dr a dramatic bundle, and a blue pack. And the blue pack has 100 skies, the dramatic pack has uh, 75. And what it looks like is when you download these, you have uh, all of these. So here's kind of a preview of what some of the dramatic skies looked like. I'm just gonna flip through these really quick. And most of these are, all of these are gonna be 10,000 pixels wide. They're gonna be for digital use. If you need them for print use, you can reach out to me for a license that's appropriate for your usage. But these are all gonna be wide enough for any kind of digital use that you need. If you need a larger image, again, you can contact me for, um, for details on that or for, for the appropriate print license. So as you can see, uh, this is a resource that is not like anything else that's out there right now. And I'm not sure if it's gonna work, but I know that these skies will be valuable for to, to photographers. If you wanna try one of these skies out for yourself, you can go to theskylibrary.com, use the code SKYLIBRARY, and you'll get $5 off uh, whatever sky you decide to purchase. So many of these skies will be free for you. Uh, just, so just go ahead and browse around. Uh, you can use it once. So go ahead and sign up for an account, use the coupon code. That way, if you need to re-download again in the future, you'll have it in your purchase history, and we'll be able to track that for you. So that's it, you guys. Let me know if you have any questions on this. Again, use the code SKYLIBRARY, not the Sky Library, just Sky Library, and you'll get $5 off your first sky. Uh, thanks for watching, and let me know if you have any questions.